All right, guys, welcome back. We are ready for map two. It's been a good series so far. I have to say, a very back and forth game on Cobblestone. It was really a game of momentum and a lot of clutch moments. I don't think the scoreline really painted the picture. But we go to Dust, and this is a playground for many people on both teams. Both teams comfortable on it, but we've got AW Pierce, which is simple, and Smiths that are both nuts on this, this territory. And not to mention, uh, well, yeah. It's going to be a really explosive game. The fact that Simple's playing as well, that's so nuts. This, he had a quite a quiet game on Cobble, right? But this is where he's really going to come to life. You can see he was frustrated at the moment, didn't get as much action as he would have liked. But this is when he can really come into his zone. So, ladies and gentlemen, let's get back into this one. Let's build the hype. I know you guys can do it. We've got the best audience in the world. Round number one. It's going to be a fast play from Liquid, actually, going aggressive towards the beat tunnel. And it's Nitro. First shot gets two as well. And it's going to be three kills going in favor of Liquid. And Simple just lighting them up right now. Shock's the last player remaining. And what can you say about that one? Absolutely destroyed as they rush the beat tunnels. That was the fastest pistol round I've seen in forever. That is so insane. Simple just walks back in, takes them down, and they take all advantage of it. JDM follows it up. Nitro with the start. Those were two very precise shots. And Interestingly enough, we're seeing it on the Liquid side. Now, on the CG side, you can get away with this a little more than T side on Dust 2. It's a very long distance map, and they're going for an SMG, a 5 SMG buy. This is them hoping to establish the economy really early on, but if they get caught out on some unorthodox angles right now, thankfully there's no Deagles on the other side. That could have been a huge problem for them. GT, that's just so tilting there. You think, oh, it's a fresh start here. We had a horrible second half. Let's get back into this one. Let's be shut down in that sort of fashion. It's so demoralizing, but we're going to round number two. It is going to be a force by here. Shock's interesting enough, not getting the body armor. He's got the PT-50 smoke and flashbangs here, so tech nines as well. JDM in towards lower B. He has been very proficient with the SMGs. We caught him out for his rifle play, but he can't argue with the results he's been getting with the two weapons here. And that's the first kill going in his favor. And it's going to be a B play from the rest of G2 going in thick and far, but he goes ready for them. And they're just completely trapped in as well, because inside that tunnel they can push through the smoke. JDM is already on their back, but a good pickup on Hiko is going to open them some space. As Simple's on the wrong side of the wall, but there it is, JDM on Q. And two kills with the SMG for him, remember, building the bank up. As Simple closes it out on RPK. Money's looking great so far, and Liquid no bomb plants for G2 means no early buy. They can afford to hold these weapons for another round at least. Yeah, it looks like it could have quite interesting there, Hiko not getting as much out of that round as he would have liked, but his teammates coming in and locking it down pretty efficiently towards the end. There will be a full Hiko here for G2. I'm still trying to get up that pistol round that. What a play that was from Liquid. Just that's how you win these big games. Take it towards the terrorists there. Go on the offense. Bring the CT. It's going to be more fast play here. Liquid looking for the first kill. It's simple. All the way in T-Sport of the MP7. Takes off the head of RPK. And JDM, he's not done quite yet with this SMG. Wants to be finding the next kill here. Which he does. Takes that body. Uh -oh. Actually, it's quite an awkward exchange here. And this is actually costing Liquid now. Nitro trying to pick up the pieces. This is the problem is these SMGs from range. They try and play this game and the pistols sit back on them once they round the corner. It's a bit of an overcommitment. Scream's gone low, and although it doesn't seem like an upgrade, dropping the MP9 for an MP7 actually is. It gives slightly better distance. Yeah, that's what he needs right now. And the mind games begin. G2, 2 versus 1, like you said. Scream on 3 HP. Shocks the bomb towards long. At this point, they're going to use Scream as a sacrifice. He's going to go towards B and just try and get any sort of attention. He hunts some info here and just keep him on the B side of the map. That opens up an opportunity to at least get the bomb down for Shocks at this point. That boosts the money into the next round. He still has potential to win it at that point as well. So Scream just trying to make his presence known towards that B side. And there's nothing he can do for utility in terms of trying to distract. He doesn't have any. It's Shocks that has the Molotov, the smoke, and the nade picked up. But Hiko is rotating around. It's actually an interesting position. If Hiko continues in these tunnels, it may work out all right, because if he stayed in the middle, yeah, Scream right. would have been flanking him right now. Scream has given the call, the B's clear, right? And you can see Shocks now going towards T-Spawn, and he's actually got the bombers off. They're actually just circling around the map, around each other. This could be very interesting indeed. Hiko's going to rotate as well again, though, because he thinks B's clear. This is uh -oh. just a battle of wits, and he's making a ton of noise. Scream's going to hold the angle in CT spawn. Remember, 3 HP, but he's got the headshot lineup. Okay. And an overcommitment from Liquid at the start of the round. Thankfully, they saved on the SMGs. They'll be able to buy. But so too can G2, and quite comfortably, in fact, far more comfortably than Liquid can force into this. Double up set up Liquid and, with, with Simple and JDM, excuse me. Trying to take the game to the little to terrorists once again. They, that was the throwaway round. There's only a couple of PT50s for G2. This held back and had the exchanges at the top. They kind of preempted it. They're going to round number four here. And interesting enough, though, keeping the MP9s, even though the CTs, like you said, have more than enough cash available. Double AWP, in fact. So this could cost them, but there it is. JDM now giving the game away. He has got that open hand. It's going to be... Central B play here, that's where the bomb is right now. Kind of a default set, it will be smoked out, so that will change their approach. So I'm not sure I'm a big fan of this double MP9 setup. We'll see how it works out for them. They have got a huge array of grenades still available here. Smokes, incendiaries, and plenty of flashbangs to go with. So a long retake, definitely possible. That's why they may be heading towards that sort of mentality. They start to group up towards mid. Four players on catwalk. Nitro falls away. 
from CT, playing the ramp side, trying to catch an angle when they do cross over. He's on the M4 instead, in fact, in even allowing them to push forward, he just throws out the Molotov. That'll buy some more space and more time. Thankfully, Shox has stayed angst for long, so Elige can't push through and try and go for the flank, but they haven't won that territory, so we often talk about this. If you want to try and make an A take with a split through Cat, you need to try and get some control or some action toward long. Instead, Shox is going to wait to hold Catwalk, so watch for the Cat plant, because him just waiting for the rotations, but he goes going through CT instead. And Scream gets Nitro, does open up a bit of, a bit of movement, but they're still four on four. That's a big pick, though. Shox on the simple, opens up the space they need. Nico's still hunting for this position to try and take back Catwalk, and that's not going to work out. Shox takes Eco as well. This is falling apart for Liquid. Well, it's up to JDM now. AWP towards a pit. I think he'll be bowing out of this round, but that was actually a really impressive round from GG. Like you said, most teams will apply pressure towards longer than the start, then go back towards Shaw, but a little bit of a switch reverse from G2. They get the Shaw control. Once you have that, no confrontation whatsoever. You can almost guarantee the CTs are controlling towards long and the pit area, and that's exactly what happened. They do the double smoke, which is normally used to control that long point, but actually takes the vision away from those players retaking. But JDM here, NT spawn, does manage to find two kills. Obviously, won't win the round at this point, but it does inflict some damage to the economy. I think the G2 will be absolutely fine regardless, but. Still a close round. This is weird. Could have gone either way, but it's GT fighting two in a row here. Yeah. And big kills, I mean, mind you, this early in the game for JDM to get because the money starts to build. I mean, Shox is up to 95 already. If they don't take down those two other AKs, it could be a huge issue. Same as Cobblestone when they started out. You can see how JDM was completely locked out of that scenario as well. Those double smokes just flashing back as well, so he doesn't have the opportunity to play behind Kai. He has to fall back through the smokes, and the drop down the CT Swarm becomes so strong there as well. They couldn't really do anything from the air around there, but there it is, the first shot from Shox. Goes through the door, doesn't land any damage just yet, but JDM with that off, that's enough to win them around here. It's a bit fast replay, Smith's going in first. RPK follows up, thought about throwing the Molotov, but he gets the gun ready because he needs to be there to trade. Doesn't ever have to, though. As Smiths in body, they just simply walk in with those SMGs. JDM, remember, has the AWP saved over, but he's gonna try desperately to save it again because they're already on the hunty fund. Shock's still waiting at CT, or excuse me, at T, dropping down into suicide. The bomb planted. Okay. <laughs> nice pick through the door, I'll give him that. Yeah. He's got style today. Definitely. He's uh, been very impressive with the orb, man. Like I said before, those SMGs, but he's gonna be taking that for now. Won't be able to save the orb this time. Just up the Nitro. But he did 50 in spawn. It's not gonna do much of it, but there it is. After losing the pistol, G2 have four back. Three rounds in a row, and I think... And losing that AWP is big. They can't afford another one. They definitely can't afford an orb, but there's enough there to buy if they wanted to. It'd be up against the walls at this point. Famuses, shotguns, I don't think they'll be going for it. They're gonna play the long picture. They already have a map in hand, don't need to make any crazy decisions just yet. So, pistols, body armor, a few grenades as well. We're gonna smoke towards middle, they can go for a stack towards B, or maybe push towards long doors. We'll see what they decide to do here. Use the to cross. A couple of Desert Eagles in hand. Uh, definitely can be interesting at this point. It's looking like another fast play here from Body. He's got the MAC 10 in the looking to go for those mid doors. They've left Smiths in a position to cover off mid while well, they did push through those lower tunnels to make sure no one was going to catch them off. As they did in the pistol round, Liquid, by getting aggressive in those lower tunnels. Again, pistols here again. Legion simple with armor on Deagles. Press them on P250s or 5.7s. They manage actually to figure out the catwalk is completely vacant, but Nitro's still going to start this off with a kill again. Smith's body follows up on Elise, JDM back in the body. This is all, all right for Liquid so far. And Nitro, he's rotated all the way back toward T-Spawn to pick up this AWP. They, although they go down a man and lose this bomb site, he could be an absolute menacing factor in this round. And not only that, okay, now, right now he should just go for the save. Absolutely. And it has to be inside a pit. The problem is that he didn't commit fast enough and Scream spotted it up, so they're going to hunt for this. And Shox is already wrapping around, so this AWP is going to be harder to save than Nitro would have liked. The thing is as well, GT don't have grenades to actually get him out of this position. They have to work out, is it worth losing potentially one or two AKs here just to get that orb down? Obviously, it's a massive benefit for Liquid to save it, but Nitro gets out of the pit. That was a stronger position for him. And I, it's going to be a boost on the corner because they're trying to see deeper in the pit, but Nitro's got now. He wasn't ready for that. He was anticipating shocks to come sooner, and he was waiting to see what the boost could find. Well, that's great, but GT not dropping a single rifle there when there's an orb in the pit. He should be picking up one or two. It's such a strong position in that respect, but there it is. Four in a row for GT now after winning their first round off the back of the P250s and nothing else. It's scream. Dropping down once again, finding both his headshots, of course. We're going to round up a seven, but this is where things get interesting. This is the strongest setup you can have on Dust 2 as a CT side. The double orbs. It's going to be simple and JDM. It's what we've been waiting for, Matt. Especially simple, very aggressive, very dynamic. We'll see what he brings to the table this round. There is going to be some confrontation towards middle, potentially, here. Smith is waiting for it, though. JDM thinks better of it, decides to pull back towards A. And it's going to be a very default round here from the French side. 
So slow the pace. Simple, oddly enough, right now is actually watching us toward middle. He hasn't gone to that position in the back of the site that we heard Cloud9 raging about yesterday. Yeah, you can see G2 a little bit aware that this was the first real gun round at this point. They thought, okay, well, Liquid could bring something to the table. They could go another aggressive round towards B Tunnel to push off towards Shore. Let's see what they're doing first. If they're not on the offense, then we can go to one of our executions as well. Obviously, Smith has the all. Seeing if he can work the first pick. JDM now repositioning himself, though. Nice little smoke to give him a gap there. Could work out perfectly, you know. Oh, can't land the shot, though. Somehow, and Body takes him down. Five and four, great advantage now for G2. Yeah, huge advantage and a massive gap on the A site. Nitro tries to play out toward Goose. Catch them off if they pushed through, but TDM came so desperately close on that shot and still it doesn't work out. Elysian made his way into the long cave, so he's waiting for a push through. It's a little bit of a chance gamble that he gets that for a forward. Shocks won't anticipate him to be between the doors rather than behind the second one. But this puts so much pressure on Nitro because he's so isolated. And Hiko's going to push through B-Tunnels on the rotation to make sure they clear it and they can give simple free access. Elise does win the battle at long, so Shox doesn't check it, but here we go. It's Nitro. And a perfect lineup! He finds both as he gets in behind the smoke. It's RPK to trade it back, but that's so much damage done and such a chance for Liquid on the back of this. Smith's with a good pick on Hiko coming out from lower tunnels, but Simple's here. And RPK... Thankfully, Reese smokes this site, so he's not exposed from long, but he's got that bomb on the wrong side of the box. He just has to win the pick again. Simple good pick, indeed, as he walks back out, and the accuracy's there. He knows the last player, Elise, is out toward long, and Elise getting a little bit more desperate, has the kit. And as that smoke fades, it's a good position from RPK. Finally, the clutches are going in favor of G2, and what a round that was from RPK. Completely pins it from long and short as well. You can see Simple just hoping he would take the base there, but RPK is too fast for him, rips his head off. Once again, Simple yet to have any real mark on this game. That was the first off from JDM. That could have been the round secured at that point. He had the gap available. Nitro salvaged something there. It was actually a huge advantage, a 4-on-2 at one point, but RPK stepping up. Round number eight, and once again, Liquid struggling with the cash. It's going to be Simple just in that scout, looking to have some sort of damage here, but been pretty quiet for him so far. He's been playing towards that B side. It's going to be another fast B play, potentially, from G2. They monitor off towards the platforms, and we're going to flush anyone out here. There are going to be three CDs waiting for them. And both times that they know Liquid's been back to pistols, they've tried to take advantage of this fast play on B. Molotov to clear the angles. Bit of a stack. It's not a full four or five man stack, but three members here as he goes inside that closet. He's trying to get baited in by Simple and JDM, but G2's having none of it. They're already rotating back over. Look at Nitro, though. Look at Nitro's position. Okay. Body <laughs> definitely look at looked at Nitro's position. <laughs> you can look at it all you want, but when Body's hitting something like that, it's not really much you can do about it. Scream now, still aggressive, of course, towards middle. Has a chance to get all three. Only finds one. JDM takes him down. Still a three on two here. With Simple on the scout as well, but he's got such low HP. Can't really commit to this face. Gonna be trying it anyway, of course. Through the door, it's a headshot. Now they have got a chance to win this round. And Body, thankfully, has a smoke. If he didn't have a smoke, he's caught. He's completely busted going on A. Smith still hasn't rotated into Alp. They're just gonna play it for long and hope that Body can hold off these two CTs but they're going for an elevator boost right now. So a big pick, and all RPK had to do was hold them long enough to give Body a free plant. That fails. Spots the boost, knows both are in CT. He'll call for Smith to start moving up closer with this AWP, but at the same time, he doesn't want to get too close. Give away that long position for the post plant. Molotov doesn't quite make it in. It goes high as if they go for the boost still, but it's the smoke at CT spawn. No plant, 29 seconds. Wow, the simple is relentless right now. There's jump scouts and Smith has been hit as well. He's coming in with the Tech 9. And he has to get closer because they have to go for the plant on the safe side of the box. Big pick for him to get. His body to spot the second member, JDM. And that nearly gets costly. All on the exchange at middle and catching body in transition toward the A site. The simple definitely made things interesting. That shot through mid doors. Very exciting indeed. That's one of them. And it did come down to that two versus two. Did what they could, but this has been an affirmative start here for G2. Six rounds in a row now after losing the pistol. We go into the next gun round here. Double up set up once again. Simple and JDM back at it. HG grenades across towards mid. Smith's just very aware that it's a possibility they could go for the face here, but I think it's just be JDM looking for anyone towards the top of it. This round is actually simple there. Three players towards the B tunnels. Bombs and T spawn, and we have got a body just patrolling towards the long by himself. He can now going to be confronted with three players. He gets one, but that's all he'll get. Simple gets the second. It's an odd position for Hiko to be in. I mean, that has to be a full spray, but Simple, he collects it. He takes down the remaining two tunnels. Is cleared. Body and Smith, the last two left of JDM, staring down that double door position from Long. He's going to go a little bit more passive. He doesn't need to get caught out that far away from his teammates and make this a three versus two with an opt-down. So he swaps with Elise. He'll cover catwalk. Elise gets in toward pit, tries to play the off angle with the rifle, and... 
G2 can afford to go for this. They don't have amazing money, but they've got at least one more round that they it's, can buy. It's similar to what we discussed from Cobalt. They can just kill counter terrorists. This one is a very close round indeed. The CT money has definitely not been established at this point, so certainly worthwhile. Going for long control right now. Just a lead in that pit area. At this point, he hasn't got any grenades available. He's easy to try and find one kill, but this is an absolute disaster for Liquid at this point. They'd lose two frags, and now it's a two on two. These clutches have been going in favor of the French side, but it's going to be 35 seconds remaining and working out their next move at this point. And they know there's going to be a panic rotation off this. Nitro and Simple have already made it to Catwalk. A very smart call from G2 to go B because they just beat Liquid rotating over. This is such, th I mean, this is a, a, a match-defying round right now. Yeah, because this is when Liquid have a chance to finally get back in again, bring the economy lower on the G2 side. They themselves can start to establish theirs. And now they have to retake, not on the A site where the exchanges were, but on the B site, which is more fortified and much harder to get inside of. The smoke on the door is a little bit early, so will it dissolve almost at the time that Simple and Nitro are going to arrive? They're going to play this together. Molotov. Still in hand of Simple as he flashes in. They won't act on that immediately, but the Molotov smartly is going to clear the back of the site. And he waits with the AWP, but he has to enter with that weapon. Keep that in mind. He has to find the shot. Nearly does, in fact, does hit Body. He did take him down with that no scope, but was immediately traded. It's going to be the full hold for Nitro, but it's the tunnel position. Smiths, that's on two seconds. Nitro, oh, that had to be as close he as he did it. get it. He absolutely got it. By the skin of his teeth, he gets the full defuse, and it's the first round in six that Luke had managed to pick up. It was the Hail Mary moment. Go for that full defuse. It didn't look like he got it, but it must have been so close there. The Smith's not timing it to perfection at that point. Goes to the base, doubts himself towards the end. Milliseconds separate that defuse. Still an issue, because remember, reset just came in. They get the losses well. out, and absolutely that. He died as so a full five-man reinvestment with very little income in comparison to the lost round bonus. They have to be efficient here, because G2's bot pulling back into this scream as an AWP, but a three-man push from Liquid at long. They expect the fast play, and they read it correctly. Body manages one more, but watch RPK wrapping a cap, because he can try and expose them even though the bomb's down. Well, it makes it even more interesting. They've got the bomb as well. They can have Hiko here watching for the rotations. He gets Body, though. That should secure this one. Screaming RPK remaining. Trying to work out if it's even worth going for it at this point. Bomb secured. The strong arms have been set up towards long. One in pair. JDM watching towards the lane side. They know exactly where RPK is now. And they have to scream with that AWP. I don't think they'll go for this at this point. Obviously, one minute 15, they might as well see if they can sniff around and see if they find a lurking counter-terrorist member. There is going to be one in the form of Pico and Lower B, but they're not going to find him anytime soon. He's going to be able to scream just face down long, get the first pick, and allow RPK some sort of move in there. And that pick toward Pit. They find it fast. Okay. okay. It's RPK instead. Would have given RPK the advance. He goes on his own. Two one taps. It's just him that remains. And Elise in the corner. Can you Does imagine? hold on, but two players only alive. That was pretty sick from RPK. Those one taps. They're very difficult to get as well. And you feel like maybe Liquid over facing that one, but still they win the round. It's Elise that opens things up with the Famous. Money's starting to get to a better situation now. Keeping two players alive, but once again, that's all GT wanted to do at that point, is keep grinding, keep applying their pressure. Don't let them build up a huge bankroll here. You can see that reflected on the liquid fight as well. Not a single orb, especially not on JDM. We said he can be questionable on the rifles. And the symbol actually gets hit with the door there as well. With the scouts, there's a UMP in the hands of Nitro as well. Terror is definitely not well equipped here, so a battle of attrition here. Who's going to come out on top? Watch this catwalk boost for JDM. It's a little bit late. It's the problem. And again, he doesn't have the AWP. They're actually just going to try and bait Nitro in. Instead, he's got his back turned, but no one's watching mid because of this. So two members go to Catwalk. Simple needs to win this from the corner. He's found two, and least gets one on the offsite. But Simple does go down. It shocks in a one versus three. He saves this round, ultimately, because them not watching middle nearly cost them the site. And Shocks may still get a plant out of this. The smoke on the doorway. Nitro is in toward tunnels. He's going to get a smoke in front of him. Naturally, expect him to push through this when the timing with JDM and the liege, kits on two. They've got all the flashbangs in the world at this point. Let's go together. Shox does find one kill. That's Nitro by himself. Where's the reaction from the CDC? They're trying to work oh. together, but Shox, he finds two. Luckily, we call JD out for his rifle skills, but he's the one that saves the round here. Closer than it had to be for sure. And Nitro jumping through the smoke got flashed by his teammates. So their fl flash was actually misthrown. It went too deep in the site. That, that would have been incredible. That was an awkward round from the beginning. You see Higo caught reloading as the terrorists made their way through. But that's actually kind of perfect, because then they just thought, OK, the bombs had opened this point. Simple's hiding in that close corner, finds three kills. And a three versus one, I have to say, Nitro, he should be the one coming in at the back. When the smoke's down there, let your teammates give all the attention over with the flashbangs. They go first, they get the info. They go, they're not going to go down together. 
Him dying first made things a little bit more complicated, but JDM stepped up, like I said. It's going to be another force by FMG2. We've got a Shox AK-47 rolling out here in round number 12. Four Tech Nines. They have got smokes and flashbangs available. This should probably be like a mid-split. Try and work together, try and get the drop on an unsuspecting CT here. There's a smoke towards Xbox, and it's take away some vision as well. They could obviously do the A attack as well, a full execution. Smoke CD spawn. Do those two smokes towards long once again. Separate those players that potentially are there. Flash JDM back. That's what they decide to do with this one. I think it will be the latter as well. Try and get JDM out of the equation. So pressure on Nitro to deny this. JDM, there's the drop down. It's the scout one of the lineup. Nitro needs to play this perfectly. He's blinded up. Dutch respawn. It's a Legion's dead that actually bails him out, but he goes down. And G2 with a flurry of kills are on the site convincingly. It's Hiko and Elise very split up, very different angles to approach from. And Hiko. Oh, it's so tough to come out of this CT spawn position when they're all above you, all at the ledge. He does get the headshot lineup, but can't land it. And Elise goes into a one on four. And it's just the first, nearly snapped back, but unlikely, especially with the barrels, the smoke out on the platform. And it's going to go to 7-5 for G2. And money gets reset for Liquid. Yeah, it was bold. It was audacious, but they went for the force by that one AK and four tech nines. Like I said, the AX execute can be so powerful. You just need to find those first kills, and you see how difficult it was for Liquid there. Very effective flashbang coming in. Nitro doing what he can with being separated by CT spawn and the bombsite as well. Gets one kill, that's all he can get. I think JDM had a scout that round, so he couldn't really land any serious damage there. It's going to be a full eco here for Liquid. Not going to be forcing into this one. Desert Eagles, Peter 50s. That's about all they can bring to the table. What's a nice full buy for G2, though. No orbs, but five rifles. Default coming in, just work every key area, get some positional control, execute to the sides. All they have to do shouldn't be too much hard work at this point. There it is. Smith picks up the first kill. Placed bullet, catches that simple. The one inside B. He goes going to watch the door, but Nitro pulls this back with the Deagle. Screen goes down. G2's playing the long game here. They're playing this slow, they know the situation. Elise again has made it between the two doorways as well. This is where he caught off shocks last time and what completely solidified around because they had no presence at long and Liquid could go for a quick rotate and comfortably cut off Catwalk, but I remember firepower is a much different story here. This is perfect from G2 now. Obviously, it's quite tempting when you're against the pencils to group up, force the issue, go together, but they've got the first kill now. The CTs have zero information. They're quite spread out. Someone's going to make a mistake soon. That's what G2 are banking on at this point. Waiting for someone just to face, give them another kill, then they can really assert their dominance onto a bombs ahead. Body's going to be making the first move, though. See if we can find that out of position player. That will be Nitro. A little bit aggressive towards Shaw, but the timing working in his favor, I guess. He falls back just at the right time. And an opportunity to get one kill here. Can't do it. It's 2 4 G2 as they make their way to the side. Now, that's the round over. Hiko and JDM on the other side of the map, both in B tunnel. So, pretty far removed, I would say. Very much so. As they got tempted as well, like you said, to try and push through those B tunnels. RPK was watching it the whole time, and he waited until the last minute before he had to leave, caught the kill at mid. And they don't even want to give up anything here. He'd go with this AK-47. That's a win in terms of what's left over, what's the current situation. Yeah, that was a very safe and disciplined round from G2. Didn't want to risk losing any rifles. And this is a little bit interesting there. We have got Hiko picking up the AK-47. He finds shocks, and they've got two now. Yeah, that's the big thing. Now that they get that kill, JDM has a second. He needs to be a little bit careful. RPK back on that stairwell, but he's got the crosshair lineup. Doesn't get the jump on the shot, though. Faster reactions from RPK, and now Hiko's getting chased down. No guns carried over. And still not great money right now for Team Liquid. Yeah. This is, all comes off the back of that third round. They went so confident with those SMGs towards the top of the middle there. It's against Glocks and P250s. They got shut down and then just opened up the window of opportunity here for G2 and they really capitalized. We know Dust 2 is one of their strongest maps. It's got so much raw talent available, especially in the form of Shoxy and Scream. This is one of the maps they can completely dominate on. Smith seems to be having a good game as well. It's another eco for Liquid. Five man stacked towards Long. They're hoping it's going to be a fast play and they're going to get it. Shox gets the first kill, though, spots a few more players. He'll be falling back and give the signal to his team. Get towards B right now. Let's start moving around. I'll stay here and uh, watch the flanks. And the stack on the A site starts off with a kill going against it. Simple and Elise already rotating back. Nitro's going to join. And G2 once more slowing down. Body waiting for the push. RPK this time, different position. Behind the box, off angle at B doing the same. And they'll send the scream out on the hunt. He takes down Elise. Push comes back in through Catwalk. This is where Nitro found the kill last time as well, toward the top of the middle with the Deagle, but this time it's P250. And it's successful again for Nitro, but traded out immediately and again around that's going to go to G2. So we might look at another, if Liquid can even pull it back that far, another 9-6 scoreline. 
in favor of G2 at the end of the first half. The problem is that it's Dust 2 and G2 is more comfortable, I, have, I dare say, on their CT side. One of the things we have to keep in mind when we swap over is how much they utilize the information on B and how aggressive shocks can be inside those tunnels. Yet to be seen. We're going to the final round here of the first half on Dust 2. This is our second map. You are joining us. And we can see the buy coming in for G2. Quite an interesting one, an auto sniper on body. Obviously, it's one of those weapons you do a ton of damage at the start of the round. And uh, there's an array of weapons dropped on the floor as well. Orbs, AKs, absolutely everything. JDN does have the orb, but if he does side to the face, this could be absolutely deadly. See if he does do any damage, it's going to be Ego spending the brunt of it. He goes down to 52. Double orbs and an auto sniper. I'm sure the auto sniper will be dropped at this point and upgraded to an AK. Yep, there it is. And it's Smiths to open things up. JDM trying to go aggressive. Pretty much the first time I'd say in this game. He hasn't been too dynamic, hasn't been going for those first picks. He tries his luck towards short and gets absolutely dominated there by Smiths. And now it's a 5 and 4. Once again, G2 does do a very reactive map. CTs, once they lose that first player and a lack of information, they need to be pushing somewhere and gaining real estate back. But we'll see what they decide to do. G2 haven't really asserted themselves towards anywhere just yet. There's going to be holding up in a full default. This is good for Malige, though. Good position. And this captain's in decent footsteps, at least. He's gotten in there a few times now undetected, so he's done well to read that, that they're not playing aggressively at that doorway position. But again, they're going to go on catwalk. That puts pressure on Nitro, who's down below this time. And he swapped over to the AWP that was dropped from JD Amelige. He wins on Shock, so now they've got long control. Simple rotating. G2 has to decide if they go on this. The last time they did, they, it did get absolutely torn apart. And Nitro playing the car, we don't often see it. Oh, nearly finds the drop shot, but he gets taken down, and RPK follows it up. Problems now, because Elise is on 19 HP, and 10-5 might be the better story here. As it all comes down to heat go, one versus three. We won't rule him out. Flash toward long, smoke in front of him. He's going to have to go directly through it, because he doesn't have a kit. He's waiting to see if there's going to be inform any information, but this is very recently thrown, more recently than he was expecting, so it's delayed him a lot further than I think he was anticipating. And look at the lineup right now. They know that he's now on catwalk with that early information from RPK. And he's got to go. So we might get a highlight out of it, but it would be one of the greater ones considering the situation. And there it is, closed down at the end by the AWP. And 10-5 G2, so one better than they were on Cobble. That's after losing the pistol as well, picking up double figures. Very impressive, I have to say. And once again, they're holding up in the default. They're waiting for the CD to make the first move. This time it's JDM pushing off towards Shaw. Like we said, hasn't really been doing that much of that kind of business, but it doesn't work out for MG2. Hold up, they kind of segregate the CD. Like I said, no one really pushing, no one really getting some information there. They didn't have much to work with. Nitro low on that A site. The lead did something from the long doors, but it wasn't enough. Just the dominance there towards Shaw. Time and time again, G2 coming out on top. And after winning that pistol in such amazing fashion, we thought that was going to be the star for Liquid there. That's exactly what they needed after coming out of a big map victory. But that third round, that was a huge mistake for them. We go into the second half, though. We'll see what kind of buy comes in. It's going to be Liquid now on the T side. Aggressive play from screen towards middle. Trying to get the first pick. He actually takes a little bit of damage himself. There's three sets of armor available to Terra. They're trying to get his kill towards Scream. He's actually getting a little bit of trouble now. Smoke towards Xbox. Nitro will be facing this, but Scream does fall back. And what a shot that was. He's going to have backup from shots as well. Big exchanges coming in and Scream coming out on top. That's Tammy. Screams accuracy, managing to stay alive, and then he baits them towards Shocks. He eventually goes down, but that completely thwarted the play. They try to go for that fast play to middle to distract, to get, make them G2 guess that it's going to be an A play, and then rush to be tunnels. It doesn't work out at all, and simple. Caught in a blender. This time, Liquid won't answer with a pistol of their own and start the comeback. Remember, they did actually win the pistol in the first half. It was yeah. the, the, the third round where they got caught out with that SMG push. So this one, going to G2, it's going to be two good starts and halves for them. Absolutely. And that was the Scream baiting them in and saying, okay, done some damage to me, come get me. Shock is there, ready to back him up, and then Scream just finds some form, hits two great headshots, and Shock reacts, pushes towards Long as well, completely locks him into the mid area, all fell apart at that point. But the semi force fire from Liquid, three sets of armor and upgraded pistol. JDM and Nitro are taking it a little bit easier. JDM, of course, just in the Glock. We've already given the reasons why he does that. He needs to be the AWP on that first gun round. On the French side, they've got four SMGs. Obviously, the bomb wasn't planted here, so they can kind of justify that. If the bomb goes down in pistol, you normally get a heavier rifle setup to kind of be ready for that third round AK-47 fight. It should be a pretty simple procedure here. Liquid don't really have much to work with. They have one smoke and one flashbang to actually get to a side, but all five of them grouping up towards shores. Clever little boost for Elise to try and see above that smoke in case anyone pushed, but... The main objective at this point, just get the bomb planted. 
That's what I can pin all five players to the southern map. A lot of distraction. JDM, nothing in his hands, just wants to get a bomb planted there. To mention as well, it's twice now that we've seen teams go in this game. Both teams going for that five SMG buy. And Shots is going to make it work. Indeed, he makes it work as him and Smiths collect two kills apiece. It's on the Hiko with one kill to his name again. That bomb plant is the goal. He's managed to pick up a second, maybe a third. Hiko, he's pulled his back to make it interesting. He's bought himself some space. They're going for jump shots, which prohibits him from planting the bomb. It's 9 HP. Oh my gosh. And he nearly lines it up again. That was close. G2 obviously trying to deny the bomb plant there, but they're getting dinked all over the place. Nico definitely makes it interesting. But unfortunately for Liquid, it's not going to amount to too much here. The bomb wasn't planted. They can't really justify a force by going into round number 18. They're going to have to be full eco. So a good effort from Hiko. That's not going to deliver too much in round number 18. It's going to be P250's blocks. No utility. This should be the throwaway round. But we said this in the first half, and it was a very aggressive play from Liquid that actually Locked him out of this game. Scream doing the same, but he finds the first kill here. Takes down a leash. You get a decent information as well. The rest of Liquid are in lower B. Well, he's turned back on the okay. third Catwalk. This should he easily be able to hold them off. And there's the cash built up. Liquid, one verse five, with simple remaining on a P250. Can't even get one out of it. Desperately close on RPK, and Scream wasn't far behind with 6 HP, but now the guns come out 13 to 5. G2 Esports. I would say more than in control. They can actually sit back and play the long game. They do bring Smiths onto the AWP. But they've got some rounds to work with. And remember, nuke third if needed. We've never cast a nuke. I'm excited. I'll warn you. Get ready for the minimap to confuse you. Oh, great. I'm normally confused anyway, so that's not going to help. Anyway, round number 19. You know, he's going to be the full buy here. Like we said, JDM on towards that orb. Not a double orb setup for G2, though. Just going to be Smiths. But this is his home map now, especially on the CT side. He does incredible work. Didn't have the best game on Cobble, but definitely having a better performance on Dust too. It's 13-5, a must run around for Liquid. If they were to lose this, it would be devastating. It's going to be a fast play towards Short as well, but Shox is ready for them. Shox is ready. He's playing similar to how Nitro did, getting further back. He's got a deeper anger on that ramp to try and control, which means he's got the jump on them as they wrap around Quad, and not only that, he's got a support system. His Scream comes in and picks up two as well. And JDM, the last alive this time, with the first gun round going, I guess as poorly, you could say, as all the eco situations before it. It's a very fast exchange and G2 just has a setup that completely thwarts Team Liquid. It's yeah. going to go to 14 rounds for G2 and money gone on the Liquid side. It could be match point just as quick as that. JDM can't really stay alive as well. There's too much time. He didn't have position to actually stay alive at that point. It was a very interesting approach to have Liquid. Like I said, the first gun round trying to muscle their way up towards short as fast as possible. One smoke goes down. It takes a vision away from the CT. But like we said, Shox and Scream just ready for them as well. Shox, uh, sorry, Smith's chiming in as well. Simple procedure for them, only one player drops. Let's scream, let's scream right now. Like we said, him and the duo of shocks has been very impressive since this new complexion of G2 has been formed with Body coming as well. And Body, I have to say, he's been an amazing asset for them. He's great at anchoring certain bomb sites, and especially on the CT side as well. This is what we first noticed him with us too. Playing that beach side by himself seems to be always good for one or two kills in every scenario. Yeah, I mean, that's what we kind of touched on yesterday when we talked about Team Philosophy and Kerrigan bringing in Kate, uh, Kierby yeah. and how they have to, you know, switch up positions. And unlike Envious, which brought in Devil, and I think a lot of that had to do with Devil being the hotter player over the two months prior to the roster change. But before that, Body was always the more consistent one. I was a bit curious as to the switch, but Envious took a guy who was an aggressive CT player, an aggressive Lurk player, and put him in a support role, and they never really got a chance to get used to him. Rather, they just said, these are our systems, get used to it, or, or, or we don't work. Yeah, well, Whereas G2 brought in Body, they put him in his positions. They asked him what, what he wanted to do, right? He said, where do you exactly. feel most comfortable to build the team around this new player? Instead of forcing him to do something he's not comfortable with, he says, well, I like anchoring sites by myself. I'm always good to find those one or two kills. I can actually read the game very well. They're allowing us to do it. It's working out very nicely for them. We do have a tactical pause that we didn't really touch on this, but Liquid up against the ropes now. It's 14-5. You feel like this will almost certainly go towards Nuke. Considering the money Liquid have available, they will be forced buying here. Two weapons on their side, a Galil and a Scout, and then three pistols. They have got the utility, but this is it now. If they were to lose this round, it's almost certain that that still will be going in favor of GT. This was their pick. Cobble was what Liquid went with. And Nuke looms ever closer. So Scout, Galil, Tech 9, Times two and a deagle for simple. For Liquid to try and make something out of nothing. As the liege flashes through, catches himself a little bit, but it doesn't matter because it pushes GT back there. A little bit late on that smoke as well, but when they do go through, they find only one. Only one. Remember this because that gun's potentially picked up for Liquid, but it's traded back. 
as Sharks takes down a Legion. They have control still of the platform. They've transferred their aggression on the CT side toward Catwalk. They want to try and catch them off in potential rotation, but Liquid hasn't committed to that just yet. They're still inside of that long cave. And look at Sharks, though, because now they're going back, and he's at the top of mid. Yeah, this is very smart from Shox. Not overcommitting now, being in the sort of one and done position. He's getting tons of intim. Probably has some footsteps now as well. They're ready to towards T spawn. He's lurking in suicide. And what a play that is. Vines two kills. Round over. JDM now left in a horrible position. Hasn't got the bomb. And players surrounding him. G2 this game has been very good at understanding what every kill they get means. And this time they get that long JDM. He's going to tag down at least in the screen. There's low HP on two here, but it's Shox that's still giving him troubles. Audi's the high HP player, so him more inside mid right now. If JDM can actually find this pick. It's not over yet, and Shox needs to consider this possibility because he's lost track. Okay, the scope in should give it away. Yep, indeed it does, but good pick for JDM again. I'll get back to my point because this is actually heating up. JDM's got a chance at this. But here comes the secondary peak. He's making noise. Screen goes for it. Can't find the flick, and it will be map point now for G2. Pointer's going to get those first early picks at long, and rather than staying there to allow them to escape, they say, okay, we've already won the battle. Even if we have to give up a little bit of space to them in long, if we rotate fast enough, we can trap them here. We can yeah. hold them inside of the map, and they're already weakened. It works out there. We saw them also do it on their T side, where they got a couple kills toward long. They knew Simple and Hiko were playing at B. They beat them on their own rotation and went back to the B site to close out uh, what was a round where it was four versus two against them. They've been very good at reading the situation, understanding rotations. That's Dust 2 101. As soon as you lose something like Long, the reaction has to come in. You need to be going aggressive there, and Shock's reading it perfectly, locking them in, actually managed to win the round as well. Potentially the last round here, you can see an under Cruz Liquid coming into round number 21. We four, well, three AKs of Kilo on Tech 9, fast towards middle. Trying to swarm the CT, it's working out so far. Nitro finds a first headshot, can body hold them off, we just praised him for being so good in this B side, but he gets one as well. Shock's pushing through the smoke, three on three. The retake begins. So finally, Liquid with some ground to stand on. Again, B site very fortified, but it's going to be a double approach from tunnels right now. Shocks and RPK who went for the long rotation are just arriving. It's Smith that needs to distract and support by getting any utility. He's got one flash to do it with. RPK is the one with the better set of nades right now, including a Molotov, which is completely around the inside of the boxes where JDM is playing. But first, they have to get that far. And they don't have a ton of cash on this G2 side. Again, they've got lots of rounds to work with, so I guess they could justify committing to it. But if they wanted to, they could also save it up and try and play the long game. But there it is. There's the entrance. Shocks with two simple and JDM gone. They find a liege, and it is going to be Nuke as the decider. 16 to 5. No, they haven't got they it. They haven't got it. They backed away. I thought they had the kid on it. I thought Shocks was close enough. <laughs> So they do take all five Liquid players down, but they cannot win the round. Very close stuff there, but Liquid do hold on and see the fight another day, another day here. 15-6. I definitely Denver. thought Chucks was closer than that. I, yeah. My mistake, but he came in through the door a little bit late and the kill a little bit later than it needed to be. So a Liquid do survive, but again, they have no money going into this. They force up a little bit better this time with AKs. It's double Ops G2 now and uh, three AKs. A scout and a girl was not getting any better for Liquid. Quite chance rounds at the moment, just fast plays towards middle, sticking together and hoping they can find those initial picks. This time, before it was Nitro to open things up, and the B side, Body could only find one. Three on three retake was successful, the bomb slips away. Shox now smokes out towards middle. Once again, it's a fast play. This time, simple to open things up. He takes down Body, but Shox, he's in prime position here, jumps over the boxes, and he finds a kill towards Nitro. Four on three, this is going to be in now. It's getting pulled back slightly. Hiko's got a chance. One versus two, but as he falls in there, this time we can call it. And it is shocks to do so. 16-6, so only one better for Liquid in the end. And we go to Nuke. And good, I mean, very good mid-round calls the whole way through from G2. And honestly, I mean, Smiths, we talk about this being his home map. Did rise to the occasion, but again, shocks and scream. It was all about them. Absolutely. Every single time. Does two especially. This seems like their home map. Lots of lots of frags being exchanged, and uh, Smiths once again. It's, we talk about him every single time. He's actually able to hold that A side very effectively. 16-6 after losing the pistol as well. That's a dominating victory for G2. Well, we will go to another break, and it will be map three to decide. And remember, we have no information really on how Liquid's going to be prepared for this, so it will be an adventure. We'll see you in just a second. Do you play Counter-Strike? 